Well, Ambassador Selma Ashipala Misiavi is a diplomat of note, of course, having served uh, uh, in various capacities, a career diplomat, and of course also has headed uh, the Ministry of International Relations and Cooperation in the capacity as Executive Director. She played a key role, of course, for Namibia's uh, meat export to Ghana and has been a true reflection of the Namibian people abroad. The one thing we know, of course, about the President is that he was referred to as an internationalist and she joins us now on the line from Ghana uh, to to just reflect on her relationship with the president, of course, uh, why he is being revered globally uh, for his governance and uh, democratic ideals. Uh, Ambassador, very good morning to you. Uh, good afternoon to you, and thank you very much for making time out to join us. Thank you, Ricardo. Good morning. Well, let's start off first and foremost, of course, quite a difficult question to ask. But nonetheless, how did the news uh, of the passing of the president get to you? And what were some of your, your, your initial reaction to this news? You know, um, somebody asked me yesterday how I learned about the passing of our president. And I said, I heard it from himself. And this person said, how? And my answer was that he appeared to me. He told me he was leaving. I just did not understand then mm -hmm. that what he meant was that he was leaving this world. Mm -hmm. So the whole of Saturday, I was in a very somber mood. Because Komit Hake was not just a, my president, he was a friend, mm -hmm. a big brother, a mentor, a critic, a protector. So I went to bed Saturday, 9 o'clock, and I switched off my phone. I don't know why. I woke up at 4 o'clock Sunday morning, and I opened my phone, and the first message I found was from a Ghanaian friend of mine who said, he was a good man. May his soul rest in peace. Oh. Please accept our condolences. Now you can imagine I'm coming out of a deep sleep. So I start scrolling down my phone. I see a lot of missed message, uh, phone calls, messages, but nothing is saying something about our president. So I started scrolling again until I found a message that says, did you hear that our president is no more? I was shocked in disbelief. My whole body was just numb, Ricardo, numb. You know, there are people, death will come to all of us. Mm -hmm. It's, 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 an, it's an inevitable. But there are some people who, as we say in diplomacy, are larger than life. Yeah. You just think they will be there forever. You don't expect them to go. Because they bring a sense of protection. They bring calmness to you. And you just think they'll be there forever. And, and that is how... And please, I, I pray that I will keep it together during this interview because, as I said, Komet Hake was a dear friend to me. He was actually a mm. father figure. Let, let, and let's start there. Let's I start there. owe him a lot. I sit and stand where I sit mm. today because of what he meant to me. Let's, let, let's take a step back. Um, what, was your yeah. first, what were your first encounters uh, with, with the president? When did you meet for the first time? I, I first saw Comrade Hagen in Kwanzaa Sul, uh, in one of our health and education centers of Swapo in Angola. Mm. I can't say I met him because I just saw him from a distance. Then the second time I met him, now, which, which was really him talking to him, it was in 19, I think, 84. There was a Swapo Solidarity Conference in Brussels. And all our leaders were there. Comrade Hake was there, Comrade Ben, as I used to call them, 
Committee Depot was there, and the man himself, the president, Chiriange, and so many other leaders. I think Katamiri was also there. Mm. It was a, a conference to mobilize support for the liberation struggle of Namibia. And Dilimani, the original Dilimani was also there. And that time, I was a member of the Swapo Youth League Central Committee, mm. responsible for the Swapo Pioneer Movement. So I was directed to go to this conference to represent the youth from inside. There were also youth leaders from, from uh, inside the country. And lunchtime, Comrade Hidipo came to me and said, Selma, the leadership met. We have an evening event, and you are going to make the speech. Ricardo, I almost, I felt like disappearing because <laughs> this would now be the first time for me standing, speaking in front of my leaders, the Swapo leaders, mm. whom we saw revered, and speaking in front of an international audience. So I put my thoughts together, I put something down, and I gave it to Comrade Hidipo to go through. And he said, no, this is fine. <clears throat> so the evening came. Dilimani is now standing behind me, and I am there with all these lights and everything, waiting for this Namibian girl to, to address the world. And as I went through my speech, I memorized it so well, I was not reading. Halfway, I just had applause. Some people were standing up, and I could see far in the back, Comrade Hake and Buridap and the others, you know, rooting me on and encouraging me somewhere, holding up their fist. And the, there was a thunderous applause. As I was descending from the stage now, Relax that, oh, I pulled it off. I saw Comrade Hake running towards me and embraced me and he almost lifted me off the floor. And he said, I am so proud of you. That was the beginning of a long-lasting friendship mm. with Comrade Hake. Mm. What are, what are if, you know, as I've been speaking to a number of people over the last two, three days, they've... Uh, there's always the professional, but outside of his professional public life, I've been hearing about stories of somebody, uh, the, the uh, 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 Honorable Governor Kashiro yesterday was mentioning that, that he was at his, uh, showed up at his uh, uh, father's funeral unannounced and assisted the family. Uh, uh, the former Minister of Justice was saying that he bought him his first suit and so many stories of him paying for people's funerals and weddings. And what, what are some of your personal fond memory that you can perhaps recall and share with us, which is outside of the professional life? Um, you know, everybody is true, has a professional and mm. uh, a personal life. Mm. Uh, Comrade Hake was a people's person. He didn't wear his status on his sleeves. Mm. When he's with you, he will bring himself to your level. When you do well, he will shower you with accolades. When you mess up, he will do the same in the same measure. What he did not like is disrespect. Mm. He was comfortable among his peers, among the young people, among children. That is just how he is. I remember when I came back from New York, because all my peers now were ambassadors, and I'm like, why am I still here? You know, 10 years in the profession. And I was talking to somebody. I can say this now because both of all of them are gone. Yeah. Comrade Hake, Comrade Ben, Comrade Titipo, so I will not be reprimanded by any of them. <laughs> And one of them said, you know, Selma, if when you meet Comrade Hake, because I just arrived from New York, eh? 10 years in New York mm. as an ambassador, you must know that this man is really your brother. Your name was being discussed somewhere for you to be given a position. 
Many people were against because of what I will not mention. And he said, the only person who came to your aid was Comrade Hake. And Comrade Hake never told me this himself. I heard it from other people. Then there came a time I went to Lusaka. I was going to New York to, for a speaking tour. The president was invited, but he said I should go because the person who was invited from the ANC was also from the Youth League. So he said, no, let Comrade Selma go. So I went to Lusaka. I stayed with Comrade Titana, and Comrade Titana invited Comrade Hake and the Mo Moses and everybody for dinner. And Hake, Comrade Hake sat me down. He said, have you been to the United States before? I said, no, I have not. So what are you going to do? So I started telling him, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. The man set me down and gave me a tutorial <laughs> of how to behave myself when I'm in the United States, what to say and what not to say. You know, he was somebody who was not afraid of sharing what he knows. So the, he will the, the wisdom was available said, freely. You, and, you know, he will, he will really... And, and, and if you don't have a thick skin, you'll think that he, he doesn't like you. <laughs> but that is just how he, how he is. Whether it's in public, one day we went to State House when I was a permanent secretary. And every time I, because you get the schedule, sometimes you don't have the schedule, you are just told you must go to State House. So I always told colleagues in the ministry, when you come to work, always dress as if you are going to church. Because you never know when you are going to be called to go to State House. And when you appear shabby, you will just see by his face that oh, he does not approve oh, he of will what tell you are. <laughs> so I always made sure I was immaculately dressed. Because the man himself, I mean, he could wear a suit, eh? <laughs> no, he could. He could he wear could. a suit to the admiration of his peers. Hmm. And he knew always you know, to kill. that he was in a class of his own. Mm. He was a man of the people, and I will really, really miss him. So we were at State House, and then this man was saying his goodbyes. And uh, he also said, I, I want to thank you, uh, Your Excellency, for the assistance. I also want to thank my colleague from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Mm -hmm. And I was seated there with Comrade Hake. He just interrupted his head. Yeah. Is there what? Why are you thanking them? They have been paid. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Such is the nature of the man. But you see, a Ambassador, I, I wanted to... That is the nature of... I wanted to throw something in quickly because of the, of the time. I, I really want us to, to reflect on, on, on his yes. role in the international space. He always maintained, of yes. course, that, 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 that we are a country uh, born out of international solidarity, of course. Others have also described him, yes. even though he wasn't an ambassador, they have described him as a diplomat yes. of note in terms of how he could deal yes. uh, with, with other global leaders. Uh, reflect on, yes. on, on, on his character uh, uh, and legacy in, within, within that space. You know, yesterday we, op we opened our book of uh, condolences here. The first person to arrive was a representative of the Embassy of Angola. Mm -hmm. The second person was the doctor, or the daughter of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, Samira Nkrumah. Mm -hmm. She stayed with us for two hours, reminiscing about the teachings of Dr. Hage Kengo, that he was really a pan-Africanist. She said, he reminds me of my father. Comrade Hake is somebody who was revered by his peers because he stood by principles. Yes, he accepted that Namibia was a small country in the scheme of things, but he upheld our sovereignty. He could stand alone at the international scene on an issue if he's really convinced that this is in the interest of Namibia. You remember the issue of the economic, economic partnership with the European the Union. EPA, the EPA agreement, Hake, yes. Hake, the EPA. Hake stood alone to the extent that he was able to sway everybody to come to Namibia's uh, position, and that was adopted 
as the position of the APC. On the issue of Western Sahara, Comrade Hake was against the admission of one country, which is actually the occupying, occupying force of Western Sahara. He stood alone, and he was telling his colleagues, you are making a mistake of readmitting this country because it will be a hurdle in the attainment of the self-determination of Western Sahara. Where are we now? Still. This words have come to pass, mm. exactly. With Cuba, he will defend those people among his friends and among the enemies. He was principled, he was steadfast, and he will all make sure that Namibia's voice is heard. Mm. He will always tell us, the diplomats, we are a sovereign country, but we are a small country. We must know mm. when and how to defend our national interest. He was invited, invited one day to come to New York. I know that we don't have much time. And upon arrival, he got invited to go to Chicago to go and address a meeting. So we were in his hotel room and he said, I just received this invitation. What do you think, colleagues, should we do? So he went around the room. And many of us were airing our views just to impress him mm. that we are patriotic and blah, blah, blah. No, you cannot go because we are a sovereign state. If they thought that we are important, they should have sent the invitation in advance and so on. And then after everybody has spoken, he took the floor and said, let me teach you one thing. Yes, we are sovereign, but we have an interest to protect. Mm. What will it take from me if I go to Chicago and go and market our country? Rather than sitting in this hotel and be talking to you before my meeting starts tomorrow. And that really has stayed with me to say that when you ask, when you find yourself in a position where you have to make choices, always think about Namibia. Mm. What will Namibia gain out of this? Mm. And the messages we are receiving are testimony to the fact that he was really revered by his colleagues. And I think we need to prepare ourselves because that funeral will be overly attended. Uh, and, and that's the thing, and they, you know, they, there are so many questions that I wanted to ask and so much I wanted to get into with you on the bilateral and, and, and multilateralism side as well. But I know we will have the opportunity to have a conversation once you come down for, for the funeral ambassador. Just your parting words, uh, how do you feel uh, Namibians should remember uh, the late president? What, what, what should we do to continue his legacy? President... Genkop has gone, he's now unite, reunited with his friends and brothers, the Peter Nanyembas, Mosefi Tendero, Burira, Hidipo, Meme Putuse, and all those ones. And he will tell them, I left the Namibian house intact and in peace. Mm. And I think the most appropriate way to remember and celebrate the life and the legacy of Comrade Hake will be to make sure that we continue to be united as a people. We continue to remember the road we have traveled as a nation to be where we are today. Mm. We become more emphatical, to have more empathy to one another because that was his motto, that was what he stood for, and that is what will make him to rest in peace. Thank you very much. That Am will be my words to my nation. Thank you very much, Ambassador. We'll definitely speak to you once you uh, come back in the country for the funeral. That